You're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. Here, we'll help you unlock the secrets of entrepreneurship and self-development. This is your host, Alex Quinn. I'm a full-stack marketing executive and global keynote speaker. Get ready to get real-world knowledge from top-level entrepreneurs and world-class business leaders. Hey guys, Randy Zuckerberg here. Hi everyone, it's Neil Patel and you're listening to Hustle Inspires Hustle. This is the motherfucking CEO, Andy Frisella. You're listening to Hustle Inspires Hustle with Alex Quinn. Become an authority and thought leader in your niche. Join a free private community of entrepreneurs and professionals looking to grow their business and optimize their performance. Get easy to learn resources and materials that empower your personal and financial success. Easily accessible for free on desktop and mobile app. Go to hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app to access now. That's hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app. Enjoy the rest of the episode. What's going on, everybody? This is Alex Quinn, and you're listening to the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. On this week's episode, we have the Tin Can Brothers, and this is a very exciting episode because... This, I think this is about to be like episode like 49 or 50. And up until now, there's only been either a solo podcast or two people per podcast. And on this one, we're going to have four. We have Brian, Corey, and Joey from the Tin Can Brothers. What's going on, guys? Hey. hey. Thanks for Hello. having us, Alex. Teamwork yeah. makes the dream work. As they yes, say. it does. So, guys, let's break it down for everyone. Uh, what's going on with the Tin Can Brothers? What are you guys known for? Let's hear a little bit about what's going on in your world. Well, we are a, a writing and producing team. Um, we got our start uh, on YouTube. We are kind That's of- That's Joey, by the way. Joey, what's up? <laughs> this is Joey. Yeah, sorry, introducing each, each as we go. Um, we got our start uh, online. Uh, we are an offshoot of, we used to, we all met in college at the University of Michigan and started a theater company there called Star Kid Productions, which is an online musical parody company that kind of went viral with this Harry Potter musical that we did in college that then went viral online. And uh, about, God, six years ago now, seven years ago almost, we, um, Brian and I had been living out in Los Angeles and Corey moved out here from Chicago and the three of us just started making things together. Started with about, you know, we just got our, got our, um, our, our, our hands dirty, just kind of making a ton of online sketches on YouTube through our channel and did about a couple years of doing one sketch a week on that. And then we have kind of expanded since to, doing live shows, uh, short films, uh, musicals, concerts, different events. Uh, we directed and wrote a, um, an interactive experience at Comic-Con last year for Brooklyn Nine-Nine and are now kind of culminating in this series, uh, Wayward Guide, which we are now promoting. Okay. So, um, Corey, what's up, man? <laughs> hey. I see you smiling back there. Tell me. Tell me a little bit about you, brother. Uh, yeah, the we like like Joey said, we met at the University of Michigan, and we were all part of the theater program there. But uh, we we still all sort of like come from slightly different backgrounds. Joey and Brian studied acting, and I was in the the production, uh, the design and production part of the department. So my concentration was definitely more. Uh, scenic design, like producing, directing, that that sort of thing. Um, and as like a trio, that ends up being like super, super helpful that we, we've all grown and developed our skills individually over the years and like developed new ones. But it's great because I think each of us has different sort of like expertise to bring to the table so that like we can always sort of triangulate a solution to a problem. And as a starting point, I think it helped us even make things from the beginning. Cause you had just, you had created a, you had done a musical series, World's Worst Musical in Chicago prior yeah. to moving out. So it's also Corey was coming with a lot more expertise on actually creating and making the things that uh, Brian and I had maybe just either 
thought about or talked about. And so that like really acted as a good catalyst for us to just start doing stuff on our own. And there's definitely this um, DIY element where none of us are really content to sit around and wait for opportunities to happen, which is a large part of the entertainment industry for many people. <laughs> so it's, it's awful. Um, it's true. So, you know, we would rather, you know, do the hard work to learn these skills to create our own content than wait around for someone to hand us an opportunity. And it's been hard work, but it's, it's paid off for us. And I feel like we're all better for it. You know, I think, you know, Joey and I are probably better actors now because we've produced and written and we can all see things from multiple sides. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're immersed in the, in the experience and, and you see it from multiple angles. It allows you to be more dynamic. That was Joey, by the way, guys. Oh, my bad, Brian, right? That was Brian. That was Brian. Yeah, okay. You're going to grow to love this voice. Some will grow to love this voice. Some will grow to hate it. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I'm sure they, people would love it when you guys are doing, you guys got like 29 million views on that YouTube series, man. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, as Joey was saying, we launched with this company, Star Kid, with this video called The Very Potter Musical. Um, was that in 2009-ish, guys? Yeah. Yeah. We were all yeah. in college and it was just this weird juncture of luck meeting the fact that YouTube was just in this infantile state, you know, and then also Harry Potter was so popular and then just the combination of all these things like good SEO timing, basically. <laughs> yeah. And it just sort of took off from there. It, it like found the like Harry Potter community that uh, at the time, like people weren't sure because the books were ending, the, the were over, the movies were over, weren't sure that they were going to go beyond that. But ha since then has proven to be a very like robust fan community that goes way beyond just the books. So what it sounds like to me from like what you guys are telling me and from what I've seen is that you guys aren't only writers, directors, producers, and actors. You guys are also marketers because you guys know what's up. You, you, you guys understand the power of digital platforms. You just talked about SEO, the, the power of YouTube. You guys have dabbled in Kickstarter. You guys raised over 200 grand on Kickstarter. So you guys use these digital platforms to your advantage to be able to bring your creativity out there. And I think that is really cool. That really caught my attention. I'll tell you what really caught my attention when I came across your stuff. It was the narrative podcast. Because if I could be completely honest with you, I've only been in the podcasting space for a year, right? It's something that kind of just like fell into our lap. And when we started doing it and, be, and remained consistent with it, but I, I had never gotten into podcasting. So when I heard about narrative podcasting, I was like, wait, I'm used to interviewing people. Like, you get what I'm saying? Or, or like listening to certain podcasts where they talk about certain subjects, but when you have actual characters and stories and storylines that you're developing in these podcasts, that's actually amazing. And that blew my mind. And I was like, man, these three guys are crazy. I got to talk to them about what's going on and hear about how they put these things together because I know it's a lot of work. You know, we create oh, yeah. content, we produce content for the agency, for our clients, not the type of content you guys produce, but we produce content that sells ads online and, cre and creates revenue online. And it's a lot of work for us because we're used to being on a laptop running at like ad campaigns. So when it comes to the producing side, the storylines, the scripts, the call to actions, all these things are, are are very, very time consuming. But ultimately, they give the full picture. So why don't you guys talk to me a little bit about the 11 episode narrative? Well, what's been exciting about that is, you know, this project we've been working on has kind of been a, a several year project. We started, we, we funded the initial project in 2017 and in that same on fall on Kickstarter, the, mm -hmm. and then shot the 10 episode series uh, that fall in fall of 2017. And kind of since then have been working through, you know, going through the, usual production woes of budgets and, and getting thing and over budgets and <laughs> needing to raise additional money through different avenues to finish different aspects. Which for us sometimes means mounting a whole nother show. Exactly. Because it's, that's sort of our main skill set. That you kind of need to spend money to make money uh, yeah. <laughs> or, or deal. But when we have eventually came back around this past year to finally being able to go into production on the podcast element, because the way Wayward Guys works is we have a, a 10 episode series and then an 11 episode podcast that is the podcast that the characters are creating we, in the we series. Describe, 
Alex knows the show, but we should describe the show. <laughs> for those who don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah yes, Way- Wayward Guide for the Untrained Eye follows uh, two podcasters named Artemis and Paul Shoehorn. They're twins. Uh, they work at a fictional podcasting company we created called the American Podcasting Network, sort of an NPR-esque uh, company. And um, this insane story about small town corruption lands in their lap and they find themselves whisked away to this small mountain town in California called Connor Creek. And as they start to uh, interview the sort of like odd inhabitants and strange characters, people in the town uh, start dying, tragedies start happening, and it's sort of uh, revealed that there's a werewolf going around um, wreaking havoc in the town. And so We've got these two these two podcasters trying to figure out how to report on the story while also how how do they stay alive who do they trust and it's kind of like that saga and and the idea behind doing a series in a podcast is that um in the show you're seeing the behind the scenes like you know in a podcast or in a narrative podcast or true crime podcast when they'll be like you know they told me this off the record or um uh, they that's sort a, of yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, that's sort of they, like you're and you're like working with whatever you can get in the field or like archive stuff you can pull up and sometimes these true crime podcasts sort of go well you know the investigation sort of went down this way it's not a neat tidy ending because this is real life and okay. how do we like sculpt that into a satisfying narrative so we we love those kinds of podcast and have listened to a lot and we're thinking about like what does that look like when it's made what what ends up on the cutting room floor what can't you like sort of fit into the narrative um which is why we like being able to hear separately like the podcast that they've like made and then you can also watch the series to like see sort of them making it yeah, and they, yeah. they both sort of like stand alone. Like you could listen to the podcast without watching the series and you go, okay, like it has a full narrative mm. arc. Understood. And oh, you can also yeah. watch the series and get a full narrative arc, but you, there's sort of like a meta narrative by experiencing them both and seeing where they overlap and where they like very much differ. This is fucking great. I really love what you guys are doing. I believe in what you guys are doing. It was mind blowing. I told I told you when I saw it, I was like, "Shit, we gotta get on. We gotta get on a podcast. We gotta talk about it because it's different. It's different, you know." Um, who thinks of that shit? Like, yo, let's have a video series that this whole shit's going on, and then these guys are figuring all this out, and they also have a podcast, and then you can listen to the podcast, but it doesn't talk about what's behind the scenes on the series, so you see yeah. both worlds, and it's crazy because you're taking people from all right. Let's say I gotta watch it on my TV or on my computer or on my phone. But then if I want to continue and know more, I have to investigate. So you're making them actually go through like a, you're making them go through an adventure. And I, I saw that in music recently. Um, it's a, a few Spanish artists teamed up and they were going to drop the remix to this song. Uh, the, the main artist, his name is Dalex. He's pretty good. He's an, a Spanish R&B singer. And one of his, um, what, Puerto Rican R&B singer, one of his one of his new songs that came out was really popular. So some artists wanted to jump on the remix And then what they did is they put people through like a social media maze, right? So the main artist made a post and he said, if you want to find out uh, the name of the people on the remix, don't click on the picture. And then when you click on the picture, it it has like a tag and it says, uh, uh, don't find out here or some shit like that. You click on it and then it leads you to a profile that has like only six pictures with a bunch of swipe posts. And one of the swipes has the hidden message that takes you to the next profile. So you had to go through a specific series of like secret messages and actions to find out who everybody was on the on the song. And I think it's pretty interesting and pretty creative because in a world where all this content is just available and you just search it, find it, um, or it could be sent to you, making people go through something like that is pretty cool. Especially a lot of people that are working from home with cur- with the current situation that we're in. Oh, Putting yeah, people yeah. through immersive experiences like that is really cool. I like that. Well, we, we that, that also that also feeds into a lot of how we t- uh, structured our rewards for the Kickstarter that um, the backers in the Kickstarter were receiving and have been receiving over the last couple months is um, Corey has designed 
uh, several escape rooms before and worked at several like immersive experiences and helped design those things. And as a group and with other projects of ours, like we love creating puzzles and different ways to kind of engage and activate the the fans of the show to kind of that that help like build out the world a lot so for one of our rewards it was an investigation kit that we posed kind of a, a question about the show that was like a grander question about the entire mystery that we've established in the show and through a bunch of items we designed and sent um it kind of created this multi-tiered puzzle that they had to figure out using the items that we sent like brochures from the town and postcards and uh, like Rolodex cards and different things that would kind of create this experience. And then through that, are they're rewarded with little bits of content from the show, like voicemails of characters that you're hearing them like uh, through a business card you might get. And it's all stuff that, because we love the idea and we got to exercise this a lot with creating the podcast is like really building out this world and figuring out, you know, the kind of drop down menu of all the mysteries that you know and when you find out information there. And so through these rewards too, it just added another layer of being able to build out this entire universe and like give and reward the people who Help have been- Support it and made, yeah. made it happen. And where it's just beyond like, you know, a, a tchotchke, like some something that you're gonna like, you know, put on a shelf that like, you, they've gone through like they they have all these like souvenirs of like the the pamphlets and stuff but they've also like gone through a whole experience they've sat with the puzzle to like figure it out and hopefully it's like just hard enough that you get that like sort of like rush at the end when you finally unlock it <laughs> oh yeah. yeah hey i just wanted to jump in real quick to tell you about how to train yourself in organization balancing your priorities developing successful habits, and most importantly, having a better mindset. I'm giving free access to resources and materials on business management and self-development. Go to hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app to get access. That's hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter at Hustle Inspires Hustle. Okay, let's get back into the episode. And we love the world and we love the characters. And we had over 30 actors um, from all different spaces, theater and TV and YouTube in the show. And we were only able to show certain sides of them in the series. So to be able to build that out in the podcast and then in these rewards has been amazing. Guys, this is, this is really cool. And one of the things that sticks out to me is the level of organization and like being on the same frequency. Um, you guys have a lot of stuff going on. You're creating visual content. You're creating audio content. I'm sure you guys have other stuff going on and other stuff that are in the works. And it's not easy, right, um, to communicate all of that. Um, do you guys use any specific tools to, like, communicate with each other online? Um, for example, my team and I, we use Asana, Slack. Um, we use different ones. Slack. We're a big we're a big Slack group. We yeah. we got it, and we we keep expanding our Slack. Like even through <laughs> even through this project, through Wayward Guide, it's like we had a channel that was just Wayward Guide. And in the last few months, we've been like, all right, we need to make a Wayward Guide PR. We need to make a Wayward Guide Kickstarter. We need to make a Wayward Guide series. A Wayward Guide. So it's like now even our Slack remember, keeps expanding within itself. Do you remember back at the beginning when we would just do stuff over text and we just have like a million texts? Oh yeah, messages? it becomes impossible. I mean, that's the thing too with the three of us. It's like with the three of us also now not being able to meet up in person and have uh, like meetings where we can get on the same page about things. It's really helpful with things like Slack. We just also adopted Todoist recently to kind of like create checklists and assign tasks to people just because the tasks to bring wayward guide home have been astronomical <laughs> and and seemingly never ending. never ending yeah exactly too many variables so, right yeah so that those things really help i mean we got a you know we got a google drive we got we got all the we just we've just recently been uh making some shared notes which is a simple but lovely feature of the yeah. ios and you know just things like that what is like one of those tools that like you guys feel like you couldn't operate without that you're like, this is our, like, this is our thing. I would say Slack at this point. 
Yeah. yeah. I like the functionality and the integration. So like if you want to look up something you've talked about, it makes it a lot easier. Um, the functionality with like Google Calendar, it reminds people when something's coming. Like for example, like this meeting, right? This meeting could have been reminded on Slack or on different areas. I really like that. Um, you could you could also integrate it with Asana for task distribution or like tools like Trello and stuff like that. It's really like it doesn't have to be as difficult, right? Because I, I talk about it often. Like we, we have the same amount of time every day. Every we live the same amount of hours. Every single one of us, and we we have to choose how efficient we want to be and how lucrative we want our life to be from many perspectives. Uh, lucrative with time, lucrative with money, lucrative with you know people around us that are the the right people. But the only way to do that is to have enough time to work on those things. And if you're immersed in, in work all the time and your work is not fully organized, then it's very difficult to do that. For example, like this podcast, I wanted to get to the point where I recorded the podcast, finished the podcast, we finished this episode today and I don't have to touch it anymore. So the videos get sent out to the team, the audios get sent out to the team, all the press, all the copywriting, all the landing pages get built, all the graphic design. And I created systems and processes for all of that but I couldn't get there before and I couldn't get everything I wanted to do before because I didn't organize myself. I was just trying to do everything. And once I allowed other people to help me, which is great that you guys have each other. And once I allowed myself to integrate systems that helped me work a lot better, allows me to run a full marketing agency like I do now and also record podcasts. So like as we're sitting here, the rest of the team is outside in the living room working on our client projects, right? So I jump off the podcast right back into marketing and the only reason I'm able to do those things is because I've implemented these tools. So it's cool to see that you guys are using tools like that and staying creative, even though you guys aren't in the same room. Are you guys doing like creative sessions through Zoom or how are you guys getting that done? Well, yeah, we always say, yeah. you know, work smarter, not harder also, because we, you know, we're running like our own Patreon and that sort of thing too. Mm -hmm. And it's like the more you add to your to-do list, as you know, like it's impossible if you're not staying super organized and efficient. But to your question, um, Recording the podcast in a pandemic was very interesting because our initial plan was to get all the actors together to do a lot of the larger scenes. But because we couldn't do that, we had to record the actors all separately. So this is 30 people in sanitized, uh, a sanitized studio. Some of them not even in California. Like some people we were working with remote setups either in New York or just around the country at home if they didn't feel safe to leave the house. So... Mm -hmm an engineer with like a face mask on sitting 50 feet away and us over zoom kind of directing into their ear. So that was really interesting. And definitely the first couple sessions we had to get into it. We had each other on um, uh, a phone call and then we had the actors on zoom and we're like muting the zoom to give notes on the phone call and that sort of thing. So it was a lot of juggling, but once we got into it, I think we're into this new sort of um, work from home sort of, flow you know mm -hmm. we've realized uh a lot of things can get done uh, over email that we previously thought we had to get together in person for i'm hearing that a lot lately and that's i wanted to take the conversation there because i was like i was like all right they, they must have seen some some big challenges right through the through the quarantine and everything that's gone on this year but then again you're telling me right now that you may have found a level of efficiency that you didn't have before because i've noticed it too for me before before the before the quarantine and before everything happened with covid i was meeting with more people in person like you know people wanted to hire me to do the marketing yo like, come to my office let's sit down let's talk and then i started adding up how many time how much time i was spending driving to offices or driving to meetings and driving back and getting stuck in traffic and then paying for parking and then getting a parking ticket and then all those little things that come with that and then i just realized okay now everybody has to be okay with working from home because they don't have a fucking choice. So how do we make this work? And I've been more productive in the last six months than I have ever in my entire life, despite everything that's going on and despite, you know, some setbacks and other things, but I'm able to let it get, get a lot more things done. And like you're saying, I don't have to have a meeting for absolutely everything. Some of those meetings could be a quick Slack message, right? Um, and you could skip a meeting because it's just a question got answered fast. And if you're communicating with your team, if you're communicating with your business partners on instant messaging tools, whether it's Telegram, whether it's WhatsApp, whether it's text messages, whatever it is that you decide to use that works for you, it's good to be able to do things on the fly, make decisions on the fly, because then a lot of things don't jumble up, which require a meeting at the end of the week 
it holds you back a few days and you could have just figured that out with saying a yes or a no on a text message. And that's worked really well for us. I'm curious to see Joey and Corey, how it's been for you. Yeah. I Sorry, think... Brian. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... <laughs> no, I think it's been good. I, I don't know if how it would be with people I didn't know as well. Like we've known mm -hmm. each other for over a decade um, and have been working together for most of it. Yeah. So on the one hand I go, part of that is just, we have a shorthand at this point. And there's also like an understanding of, of what things we all want to and like need to touch and like have a say about and what things we can just go, we're this sort of three headed beast at this point. There's a little bit of mind meld that like it, I can totally just like trust Joey or Brian to like take care of it and it'll, it'll be fine. We don't have to like all do every single thing. Yeah. Uh, and I think we, we did a lot of uh, creative sessions in terms of writing and like editing the podcast scripts all remotely. And that's something where, again, I think it, it has to do with our level of trust and, and comfort over, over the years. Cause we, we don't even, when it's just us, we don't even bother with zoom. We just do phone calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, I've been I know what they look like. I've, I've been trying, so I've been trying to figure out the best way for that because I like to like, literally go back on meetings sometimes and like, like remember, cause I, I'm usually having a meeting, I'm writing a ton of notes down, but you, you know, often you'll forget and like being in the marketing space, sometimes we, we have like calls with our clients and they'll say like something very key and like very critical that maybe one of us didn't pick up on. So I'm a big fan of going back and watching the phone calls uh, or watching the, the meetings, but they fill up the hell out of that Zoom space. It's very, it's very good though, because one of the things I like is that it's also a good memory, right? So you guys know what you're doing right now. You guys are doing absolutely amazing, but you guys know where you're gonna be in 10, 15, 20 years. You guys already have a vision for where you wanna take yourselves. And for example, like what we're doing right here, where we got all four faces on here and we're talking about your project. This is pretty cool because one day you're going to be able to showcase that right in a documentary in a in a, in a in a news clipping in a news story it's all stuff that's memories I, I remember a few months ago i was watching this uh documentary about avici and they were like in, somebody was always filming right and there was somebody like in the studio and he was like creating levels in the studio and like they were showing each other like look 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 this is the new cut or like this is the latest version and and i think that that stuff is gold because one day things are gonna be way further than they are right now. And then you're gonna back, look back and see and be like, damn. I remember when I first set up my offices, like when I first started hiring my first team members, we would, we would put like GoPros around the office while we were working. And we would just like put them on a time lapse and the people in and out of the desk doing different things. And now I go back on my hard drives and I look at those things and I'm like, man, like this has been the progress. And, and in the age of social media, people like to see that because people love to showcase perfection sometimes. And sometimes there isn't perfection in, in everything that you're doing. And there is mistakes, there is setbacks, there is different things that you could go back and talk about and educate other people, right? Because I'm sure you guys have a ton of people that look up to what you're doing right now, right? All of the things and all of the creativity and what better way to get to know you than through the content distribution. So I've been concentrating on that a lot lately. Part of our like um, uh, philosophy behind the Kickstarters is that we like to bring on these backers, sometimes thousands of people as producers. And so like in our updates, we like to tell them about the struggles and the ups and downs. And it kind of makes the project more important to them in a way too, because they go on this journey, which is often bonkers to get something made. Mm -hmm. And coming from like a digital space too, and also a live theater space in many ways, it's like both our fan bases and the people who support us, support us like embrace the imperfections of what we do in many ways and like embrace the process and, you know, love goofs and love like th knowing things when you're watching a live show. Like this was one thing that happened uh, in one show uh, that we got to catch and things like that. So I think for us, the, the accessibility of like the digital space to like in the same way Kickstarter does bring us closer to the people that are actually supporting the project to kind of make them 
to, to give them an opportunity to feel like they are actually a part of the process is something like really important to us and something that has kind of been the foundation of what we do. So it, it, it has made it less difficult for us over the years as we've continued to kind of grow and expand to share that with people and make that like a very candid experience, which, yeah, I mean, like Corey said, we've been working together for 10 years and luckily we've had a lot of experiences where a lot of that has been documented and we've gone back and seen our growth and we have lots of like actual evidence to be like, wow, this, this is what we were thinking back then. And so it makes it a lot easier to, Oh, sorry. No, it just makes it easier to assess in every moment what, you know, where we came from and what, what's next, you know, we're big believers in like a postmortem after a project and kind Mm -hmm. of sitting down and being like, what what did what did we learn from this and uh and uh, bef- like and before a project being like okay what did we learn from the last project what do we want to accomplish yeah. here go- like both creatively and business wise so we can like have that discussion then sort of forget about it and then check back in at the end and be like okay where where did we land um that, that's good that you go through it a lot of people don't take the time to do that and the devil's in the details um, it's really important. We find that those two things also like work together sometimes. Like we set our creative constraints within our production constraints. Um, for instance, uh, you know, we produced a play off Broadway and we were like, it has to have this many people. And the purpose of creating this is to like take this to New York and having those constraints, it allows us to sort of like back in with the creative as far as timeline and getting the script together and casting and then all those other elements. Uh, we know a lot of people who are creative who sort of lack the, um, that I, I don't know, I guess you'd call it like the business side or the producerial brain and they work on stuff. It's, an, it's incredible, but it never gets done because they're not good with deadlines. So that's been something we've had to learn over the years is how to set deadlines and goals and then kind of reverse engineer the creative back into that. <laughs> and, and like having that feed off each other and not, not having, I think thinking of the business and the production constraints, not as uh, limiting factors, but as opportunities. Yeah, ex- exactly. And like the, the show we did uh, in New York off Broadway, it's all but squad. And it's, it's, it's a play about a group of former child detectives, a la Scooby-Doo who like are all traumatized as adults because their dog was murdered. Um, and they have to like reunite for like one one to solve his murder. Some John yeah. Wick shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a very dark Scooby Doo. Yeah, but uh, but with that one, we because we we had our limitations of like okay, we can only have five people in the cast, um, and there are four people in this this like uh team, the Solvent Squad, uh, which meant then Brian had to play all the other characters which on the one hand, it was a limitation of go, we can't really like deal with having more actors, but that ended up being like one of the best parts of the play. It's like, you embracing, to, like embracing those limitations to be like, this is part of our style and tone and like uh, brand in many ways yeah. where that kind of those kind, yeah, that kind yeah. of ability to work within those confines and like excel within those confines is like not a weakness. It's like a strength. Which if you is, can't fix it, feature it. Yeah. Now, guys, you were listening. You heard the phrase postmortem. I'm not sure what that means. Okay. Um, this is going to be a learning opportunity for you guys. Um, I learned this from my mom, who's worked in production um, for probably like 15 years now. And she always tells me to do postmortems after everything, after events, after podcasts, after everything. And what postmortems are, guys, or at least my interpretation of what they are is evaluate your performance, your team's performance, all the mistakes, all the good things that happen, all the bad things that happen, the things that shouldn't happen again, after an event, after a recording, after anything you're doing for your business, that it's a big event, do the postmortem. After the event, the team gets together and discusses everything that happened, what we're gonna do moving forward, what we're not gonna do moving forward. And of course, Corey mentioned that also before starting, your next project, make sure to review maybe those notes or maybe review what you talked about during that postmortem so you don't make mistakes again. Because as a business owner, you know that you make mistakes again and again and again and again. But if you keep making the same ones, then what are we really doing here? You have to fix them. And that's exactly what a postmortem does. Really cool to break that down with you guys. 
Yeah, those mistakes become opportunities to learn, you know, sort of like with this pandemic, like we've all been talking about a little bit. It's like, how do you make the best of something that's awful, you know? You be productive, you keep your head down, and you just there keep are doing what you do. There are so many possible mistakes to make. Why, why make the same one twice? Yeah, you yeah. can make you go go make a bunch of other ones. <laughs> yeah, we've made we know, thousands of them, and we know <laughs> inevitably. And then it makes it easier for when the ones come up that we can't control. You know, when the when the inevitable working on a project, and you go, of course, this is going to happen. It's like if you've set yourself up for success, uh, with, uh, internally prior to that, then it makes it helps it helps you take the easier ones uh, with a little more grace. Yeah, in March we were in the middle of. Uh, producing a live show, yeah, like a, a live stage show here in LA when uh, the whole quarantine happened, wow. and every day was a new thing of like, okay, just trying to figure out like, okay, we're gonna tell the audience not to come, but we're just gonna film it with ourselves and send them like a digital version. Oh wait, everyone has to stay home starting tomorrow, so I guess we're just gonna film one of the shows right here, right now, um, just sort of. Yeah, you get used to crowd, yeah. like you get used to rolling with it because you go, okay, we've we've made all sorts of mistakes. You've dealt with all sorts of things, and you just go, okay, you figure it out. And I mean, yeah. this has happened before, guys. Pandemics, catastrophes, um, like cataclysms—they've happened to humanity, uh, and we move forward. Somebody's always excelled after it. Uh, unfortunately, bad things happen, and we have to be respectful of that and recognize that. But we also have to understand that we have a job to do. And our job to do is to keep this moving. Whatever this is, right? Humanity, what we're doing here on this planet, we got to keep getting smarter. We got to keep getting better um, and evaluating ourselves. Just like you evaluate your business on a postmortem, you got to evaluate yourself. How are you treating others? How are you helping? You know, how are you contributing? How, how are your ideas contributing to better things? And speaking of ideas, if there was no budget, there was no limitations, what would the Tin Can Brothers be doing right now? Oh boy. Well, like in, in the course of our, our working relationship, we've kind of spanned projects across all different mediums, you know, live shows, series, um, some more sketchy performancey things. And I think it's like, there's, there's a, there's almost like a white whale within each of those mediums that it's like, if we could only have enough money to do this. So I feel like we'd probably span across a number of those mediums with with like the dream project for each of them um we have a cold war spy musical that we did in la several years ago and we were actually supposed to be in new york during doing a concert of during the lockdown which unfortunately we had to cancel but that's definitely a project we'd love to mount at a larger scale at some point on the east mm -hmm. coast um, yeah, I mean, this project, this Wayward Guide series, I think we have ideas for how to expand the world and make it a larger thing. And the, the way we kind of look at it is this anthology series that it, you, you, you do more seasons and more podcasts and you kind of build out the world they there. They continue to investigate other towns and like uh, sort of other mysteries that might not be werewolves, but other fun paranormal uh, creatures. As they you guys, sort of continue you guys their journey. Out. I fuck with it. I fuck with everything you guys are doing. I, I really hope everything you guys do does its absolute best. I see that you guys put a lot into what you do. Um, and it's cool. It's really cool. And you can notice it. Um, I, I think, you know, you know, it'd be cool uh, when, when you guys get a chance. Um, or I'll send you the guys a link after. I had a guest on the podcast, a good buddy of mine. His name is Guillermo Olivo. He has a show. He has a few shows on Amazon. Um, he's, he's extremely creative. He has plugs all over the... All over, all over the United States, and he brings a lot of cool ideas to the table. He's help, He's been helping me for the last two years. I've been shooting a short film um, about the dangers of of gun violence down here in Miami. There's a lot of there's a lot of crazy shit going down right here, and um, it's just educating people, educating adults. You know, um, you're gonna have weapons. Don't have them around the kids. The kids go take the guns. They, the accidents happen. It's a big problem down here. Uh, especially between young kids, teenagers. Um, and we've been trying to raise awareness on that for, for the greater part of about four years now. We've amassed a few million views on the trailers. Um, we've got some really cool attention. We're at about like two hours and 30 minutes on the production right now. Um, have a full team shooting it. So I, I, I know I, I see what you guys are doing. And that's why I'm telling you, like, 
it's really cool. Um, I want to support in any way that I can. And I want to thank you time, uh, thank you guys for taking the time to be here today. I know you guys got a lot of shit going on, and I, I know my audience is going to benefit from this a lot. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks for giving us the platform. Actually, just this morning, we like launched our official release trailer. So today is like, we're doing it. The rollout begins yeah. like, uh, October There's no 13th. going back. Yeah. <laughs> Point of no return. Launch, right? Yeah. October 13th. Where can, then. Where can we look at that? YouTube and wherever you get uh, yeah. your podcast. You can find more information at waywardguideshow.com to learn more about the show and um, all the different platforms. And we are on all the social medias and our YouTube channel is called Tin Can Bros. Can and we're going to be hosting it on our YouTube channel, the series part of it. Yeah. Guys, remember all of these things that we chatted about, any resources, any links, anything we talked about is going to be linked on the website, hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash podcast. Find the episode. If not, if you're listening on a specific platform, make sure that you go in the show notes and you'll be able to see absolutely everything. You'll be able to follow the bros. You'll be able to follow their projects and connect with them on all platforms. This is Alex Quinn, Tin Can Brothers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Hustle Inspires Hustle podcast. I'd appreciate it if you could share, leave a review, and subscribe to the show. Visit hustleinspireshustle.com forward slash app for more free resources, event invitations, and online courses to empower your personal and financial success. Learn about marketing, finances, business development, branding, strategic partnerships, and much more. If you're looking to further connect, check me out on Instagram or LinkedIn at Alex Quinn. That's A-L-E-X-Q-U-I-N. See you on the next episode.